Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. All right, so a couple of things. If you guys are not in our Facebook VIP group, get in there. We did a trivia night. It was a lot of fun, free learning and prizes. Also, some really cool news. We just got featured yesterday in Yahoo Finance and on Business Insider and on Market Watch, which is really cool. You know, definitely utilize all our free resources, our podcasts, our free Zooms like you guys are here today. Let's get started. We're going to start with Nero, and I want to talk about absence seizures. What happens in absence seizures is the child is going to start staring into space. They're absent, hence the name absence. They're completely absent. They're daydreaming. They're staring. Caretaker is going to say they're not paying attention to me. Well, no, they're having a seizure. Will they lose tone? They can. Could they lose continence? They can. But they're going to be sitting there and they're zoned out. So identifying it and educating the caretakers on how it's going to present. And now what are you going to do about it? Well, if somebody has an absence seizure, we're probably going to take them to get what? An EEG. So what are the nursing considerations of EEG? Does it hurt? No, not at all. However, there's a bunch of electrodes that you're going to place on the scalp of this child. Children are dirty. They're oily. They're sticky. They get into stuff. Wash them. (laughs) Wash them before you put anything on them. If we're trying to determine and see a seizure, make sure they're not on any anti-epileptic drugs. The next thing that we need to know is once we've actually fully diagnosed this patient with absence seizures, now we've got to treat it, okay? And what's the drug of choice that we are going to use? Ethosuximide, identify it. Sometimes when I I do the the farm uh, crash courses or when I teach in the course, A lot of the times I do a lot of farm because they're going to throw stuff at you that you've never seen. And then you're going to look at that question. You'll be like, I don't know this drug. I don't know this drug. Maybe that's the right answer. And then you get it wrong. We all do that. I've done it. That's why I failed my board so many times. I fall for all those tricks. But sometimes I just show you so you can get exposed to it. So you know, because one of my students was like, oh, I saw octreotide. I didn't know it until you just introduced us to it. But like, it wasn't it. So I was like, okay, good. So you didn't get the answer wrong. Ethosuximide. It does have a side effect profile that we're concerned about. And the way to remember that, E-F-G-H-I-J. E stands for ethosuximide. F is going to be for fatigue. G, G-I distress. All right, let me point something out to you. When a drug is consumed, PO, or has a toxic level, majority of the time, this is one of those things I say 90% of the time, the first onset of toxicity is going to be GI issues. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, stomach, they think they have the stomach flu, they think they have food poisoning. Watch that. Watch that. H is headache, I is for itching, and then J is for Steven Johnson syndrome. What is Steven Johnson syndrome? This is like a third degree burn. It's, it's more than a rash, Kenya. It's, it's like a third degree burn, yeah. It's bad. 
it's bad. Look for that word desquamation, third degree burn. I was telling my students today in, in our course, we actually did a little bit of neuro, actually we did all of neuro today, telling them that look out for drugs that are in neuro. Things like carbamazepine, phenytoin, ethosuximide. A lot of these anti-epileptic drugs, their side effect profile includes Steven Johnson syndrome. So look out for those. All right, so that's Epson seizures. It's really all you need to know for it. Um, I don't get really in depth. I want to make sure you know what you need to know. So that way you guys can be 75 and out as well. The next one is let's talk about cranial nerves. For the most part, just remember one through three are going to be either smell or vision. Let's keep it simple. Smell or vision. Olfactory, optic, ocular motor. But the ones that they really like to ask about are going to be five, seven, and nine. Trigeminal, facial, and glossopharyngeal. The simplest of these three is going to be glossopharyngeal. Why? Glosso is tongue, pharyngeal is pharynx. Remember, break down words and understand them. Don't just memorize. Yes, this is going to be our gag reflex. This is going to be what causes our glossopharyngeal, that airway between our tongue and our pharynx, to get compromised. If a person has a cranial nerve 9 issue or a glossopharyngeal issue, we are freaking out about it. It is the number one thing in ASK graph. It is airway. Airway, airway, airway. Now let's get into trigeminal. So trigeminal is going to originate around the temporal region and it's got three branches and one goes around the eye, one will go to the cheek, and one will go down the jawline. Eye, cheek, jawline. What do you need to know about this? These people are extremely sensitive to touch and to temperature. Touch and temperature. Trigeminal neuralgia, we got firing of this nerve down those three paths that are going to be like a knife stabbing a patient. That's how painful it is. So avoid temperature changes, avoid pressure, touch and temperature. How are we going to treat this? Carbamazepine. So I talked about Steven Johnson syndrome already. But what's more high yield than Steven Johnson syndrome with carbamazepine? Agranulocytosis. Low white blood cell count. Low white blood cells. Oops. White blood cells. Carbamazepine and then... Just to tie it in, so this is how I want you guys to think when you're studying, right? If I think of carbamazepine, I already talked about, then I go to Steven Johnson syndrome. I'm like, oh, okay, well, then I know about phenytoin and I know about um, lamotrigine. I know about all these things that cause Steven Johnson syndrome. Now I go to carbamazepine. I'm like, oh, agranulocytosis, low white blood cells. Wait a minute. There's another drug that starts with a C in mental health that does the same thing. Clozapine, right? They both start with the C and they both cause agranulocytosis. Carbamazepine and clozapine. Make those ties, have those neurons connect. Because now you're understanding medicine. Now you're seeing agranulocytosis. Well, now I understand. It can happen in mental health, it can happen in neuro. So both of these are going to cause agranulocytosis. What are we freaking out about with agranulocytosis? Ask Graf, tell me. Sepsis. Sepsis, ask graph. But how are they going to present? Because it is your job as the nurse to identify things before you even have a lab value. Muscle cramps, hypokalemia, cold, pale, peripheral edema, heart failure. Identify it before you get a diagnostic test. What are we going to see in this patient? How are they going to complain? I got a UTI. Uh-oh. Why do you have infection? Because your body can't fight it off. I got a sore throat. Uh-oh. What's going on? Your body can't fight it off. And they won't be able to. They will become septic. So identifying it, very important on the boards. Very important on the boards. Cranial nerve number seven. Cranial nerve number seven. This is our facial nerve. 
what's going to happen in this patient is they're going to have unilateral paralysis. Unilateral paralysis. Their eyes are going to get droopy. They're not going to be able to use their motor function on one side. It can be called Bell's palsy, and it can also be called facial nerve palsy as well. They're going to have decreased nasolabial folds. They're going to have drooping of the mouth, unilateral. Ask them to smile and see that asymmetry. What are we going to do? Aside from identifying it, now we've got to care for this patient, do we not? Absolutely. Absolutely. If this person is not able to close their eyes, that reflex to protect their eyes is gone. So what are we worried about? We're worried about some sort of a corneal abrasion. Make sure you keep it lubricated and you close it for them or put a patch on it. Don't let it dry out. With the mouth, same thing. Keep it lubricated. Don't let it dry out. Or what's going to happen? Dental caries. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth, and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.